Heavenly Father, it's such a privilege to gather in your presence. And uh, we are here this morning to see you more clearly so that we can connect with one another more meaningfully and more powerfully. <clears throat> and Father, we know that you have, through your Son, you have asked us to love one another. No, you have commanded us to, to love one another. And we know that uh, we're discovering in this camp meeting just how powerfully we can love one another. We can actually work with you in bringing positive change into the life of someone we love. And so we want to dispense with all of the human uh, efforts we have made to change people, to fix people, uh, because we know, Lord, that you have brought change into our lives by giving us the abiding presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we want to, we want to give that that. Jesus Christ in us, we want to connect with the Jesus Christ in someone else. And so we thank you for this opportunity to learn and to grow this morning. We pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. 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 All right. Can you guys hear me okay on Zoom? I can hear you really well. Really well. Okay. Maybe a little too well. Huh? <laughs> I didn't say that. You did. <laughs> You got me there, Maxine. <laughs> All right. So um, yesterday we talked about the fact that we can love one another powerfully. And it's not just, you know, opening a door for someone, which is great. That's loving one another. It's, it's not just, you know, not yelling back at someone when someone yells at us. And that's loving one another. But we can really love one another powerfully. We can actually bring God's healing into someone's life, someone we love, by loving one another. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus has loved us powerfully, right? When Jesus connected with people, he brought healing into their lives. And so we can do the same thing, love one another as I have loved you. And so yesterday we talked about the fact that the, there's a cycle of love. In Matthew 5, verse 48, who can tell me what it says in Matthew 5, 48? <clears throat> yes. It has been 24 hours. <laughs> I'll let it slide this time. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 48. My brain is... My brain is um, Program to be right in five minutes. <laughs> Forty-eight says, "Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect." Yes, Maxine. Thank you. Thank you. Be ye therefore perfect. And so we talked about what the word perfect means in the Greek language in which the New Testament was written. Can anyone remember what uh, perfect means? Complete. Complete. Mature, yes. Mature, finished, yes. We mentioned that uh, in, if you uh, are familiar with horses, when you train horses, a horse is finished when there's perfect communication between the rider and the horse. So that's perfect, perfect communication. So be therefore perfect. And in this passage, Jesus was talking about how to love one another. Don't just love those who love you. Love those who hate you and use you despitefully. And so there is a, a perfect cycle of love. That is perfect love. And so here is this, the cycle that we presented yesterday. That it starts with the Father. Everything starts with an individual, and that is our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father created us. He is our ultimate creator. And He created us through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's the same with salvation. Our Heavenly Father saves us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so we see here that the cycle of love begins with the Father, an individual being. That love then goes to His Son, and we'll talk about in more detail today about how the Father loves His Son. And then Jesus 
loves us, and then we love one another as Jesus has loved us, and then one another returns their love and praise to our Heavenly Father. Amen. So that completes the cycle of love, perfect love. So be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. So, if we are going to love one another as our Father has loved His Son and His Son has loved us, we need to be a part of this cycle. And this cycle is all based on one word, and that is connection. The Father has to be connected to His Son. His Son has to be connected to us. We have to be connected to one another and one another has to be connected to our Father. And so, it is the perfect cycle of love. So, what I would like to talk about today is how has God loved His Son Jesus? How has He loved Jesus? And I want to start with uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And we see something very, very interesting in Proverbs chapter 8. So, I need someone to add, to tell us who is speaking in Proverbs chapter 8. Jesus. Okay? It is Jesus, yes. What does it say there? Who, who is speaking? Who's the narrator according to the actual text? Wisdom. Wisdom, yes. Uh-huh. All right, so wisdom is speaking. And... Uh, if I could have someone read Proverbs chapter 8, beginning in verse 22. And we'll read until, I think it's verse 31. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 31. Who would like to read that for us? The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or, e or even the earth was, was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains, bounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the depth, of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree, that the water should not pass his commandment. Then he appointed, when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him. I was his daily del delight. I rejoiced always before him, rejoicing in the habit of Rejoicing in the habitable parts of his earth, and my delights were, the son, were with the sons of men. All right, thank you, brother. So, in, in uh, verse one of Proverbs eight, it, it says, "Does not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice?" So, wisdom is speaking here. And now, it's interesting when we look at. Uh, keep your finger there in Proverbs chapter eight. But uh, when we go over to 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. Yeah, 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. And first we'll look at verse 24, and then we'll read verse 30. Brother Rich, would you like to do that? Yeah, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. All right, and verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. All right, thank you. So in these two verses, does Jesus just give us wisdom? Or is Jesus actually himself our wisdom? He is. The way it reads is in verse 24, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So Christ doesn't just give us wisdom, but He is our wisdom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Christ has become our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption, and our wisdom. Mm -hmm. So Christ Himself is 
our wisdom. And in Proverbs chapter 8, it's talking about wisdom being brought forth before the hills were made. And it's talking about, what I want to focus on is, is wisdom, or Christ, was daily the Father's delight. Now, isn't that fascinating? I mean, just picture it up in heaven. We have it, it, it says, you know, wisdom, or Christ, is, is growing up before the Father. And there's delight. The Father delights in His Son. And His Son delights in His Father. Such a beautiful, beautiful picture. So, then we go to, over to Jesus' baptism. So, we're looking at ways that the Father has loved His Son. The Father is the source of all love. And he, he, he loves his son. He delights in his son. And so, let's go to um, Matthew chapter 3. And in Matthew chapter 3, right at the end of the chapter, we have Jesus' baptism. So Jesus comes to John and he says, I want to be baptized. And John is a little taken aback. He's like, well, you should be baptizing me. Why are you asking for baptism? And then Jesus says in verse 15 of Matthew chapter 3, suffer it to be so now. Like, chill out. <laughs> you know? For thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. All right? And it says in verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Now, we're given some extra inspired information in the book called Desire of Ages. And in Desire of Ages, it gives some fascinating and very important information. In the Desire of Ages, page 111, I just want to read... Uh, a couple of paragraphs here, actually just one paragraph. So, I didn't realize this, but when Jesus came up out of the water, he actually knelt down in prayer on the, on the bank of the Jordan River. And he was, he was praying to his Father, and he was asking his Father specifically for power, and for the presence of his Father during his ministry. Jesus knew how, how tough it was going to be. Do you realize that nobody, no human being, really, truly understood Christ's mission? Not even his own mother. His disciples, his brothers, nobody really understood his mission. So Jesus was pleading with his Father, saying, Father, I need your power for my ministry that I'm beginning. I need your presence. And in uh, Desire of Ages, page 112, paragraph 1, it says, Never before have the angels listened to such a prayer. They are eager to bear to their loved commander a message of assurance and comfort. But no, the Father himself will answer the prayer, the petition of his Son. And then direct from the throne, the Father's throne, issue the beams of his glory. The heavens are open, and upon the Savior's head descends a dove-like form of purest light. And then she says, fit emblem of Him, the meek and lowly one. So here we say, it, it's so beautiful, the Father is crying out, Father. And, and His Father says, here I am, Son. Mm -hmm. Here I am. And the Father sends light in the shape of a dove upon His Son. Jesus had asked for the power and the presence of his Father, and his Father answered by giving him his Spirit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. So here the Father is pouring his delight upon his Son. And, and you know, it, it reminds me of uh, Genesis chapter 22, when Abraham was called by God to, to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son Isaac. And in verse 7 there, when Isaac is wondering, you know, we have the, the stuff to make the fire with, but where's the lamb? And, and the Bible says that Isaac cries out to his father, and he says, Father. And Abraham says, Here I am, my son. 
And so we see the same thing happening with Jesus and His Father. Jesus is crying out at His baptism, Father. And His Father says, Here I am. Here's my power. Here's my presence for your ministry. My Holy Spirit. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And then, of course, what does, uh, what does the Father say when Jesus is baptized? The Father Himself speaks from heaven. And in Matthew 3.17, what did, what did He say? He said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. This is my beloved Son. The Father is giving His love to His Son. It's the per- first part of the perfect cycle of love. And so if we're going to understand how to love one another powerfully, to make real changes, if we're going to learn how to connect with people, we need to understand how the Father connects with His Son. And so that's what we're looking at today. There was another time when the Father spoke from heaven. Can you tell me what time that was? Transfiguration. Yes. Transfiguration. Exactly. When Jesus was transfigured. Let's uh, go over to Matthew chapter 17. Another time too. Yes, there was another time toward the end of Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Lazarus. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, Matthew chapter 17. And would someone read for me verse 5, please? Matthew 17, verse 5. I can do that. Thank you. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. He brings me great joy. Listen to him. Ah, very interesting. I like how that, uh, your translation puts it. My dearly loved son, in whom I find great joy. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, so it's pretty clear from the Word of God that the Father loves His Son. The Father delights in His Son. Now, why did the Father delight in His Son? What do you think? Because He's His Son. Oh! And another thing is His Son didn't do anything without His Father's permission. Amen. Amen. He's a good Son. Amen. Amen. All right, cool. So, you know, I find it so interesting that here at Jesus' baptism, how many people had Jesus healed? At this baptism? Point? Yeah. We're not told of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, how many people had Jesus raised from the dead? At that point? We're not told of it. We're not told. Yeah, we have no record of Jesus doing any miracles at the, up until this point. But yet here is God saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, does God love His Son because of what His Son had done? Because His Son had done good things? No? Yes. He loved His Son because of who He is, who just who like what He said. Right? But He also, He had to have that connection before that. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. While he was growing up, he still had to have that connection with his father. Certainly. Mm-hmm. He's the outshining of his father's glory. Yes. yes. Hebrews chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Amen. There's another verse, Proverbs 16, 15, that ties right into Matthew 17, uh, 5. We just read, Behold, the bright cloud of a shout of him, and behold, voice out of the cloud was said, this is my beloved son in whom I will be. It's 1615. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. So the father delights in his son because of who his son is. It's not because of what he had done. It was who he is. His son. And here at the Transfiguration, I find it so revealing that the reason God said for his disciples to believe in Jesus, to listen to Jesus, was because he is his son. So the authority of Jesus Christ is based on who he is, the, the son of God. 
So that's a very, very important thing. If, if Jesus is not really God's son, then Jesus doesn't really have authority. So that's pretty powerful. Go ahead, brother. I don't want to detract at all from the point that you make in terms of powerful point you make, but I believe that um, when he says, in whom I'm well pleased, uh -huh. it intimates to me, that language says to me, that the way he's conducted his life, from his birth through his childhood, through his young adulthood, 12 years old in the temple, he had manifested the glory of his father. Yes. Because the character of his father was shone out to him yes. in the way he interacted, in the way he loved other people. Yes. And that circle of love was completed through his son. Amen. 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 Beautiful. You know, I, I, I'm thinking of John 8, verse 29, that says Jesus is talking to the unbelieving Jews, and he's saying, And the Father is with me. He hath not left me alone. Because I always do that which pleases him. So behavior, good behavior, is a part of it. But I would say that good behavior is a result right. of that connection that Jesus has with his father. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. And yeah, I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it. Uh huh. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, I am. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yep. Okay, so does everybody agree that our Heavenly Father loves His Son? Amen. <laughs> I think that's pretty clear. Our Heavenly Father delights in His Son. He said it with His own voice, booming from the clouds three times in Jesus' ministry, right? Three times. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So that's, that's settled. Now, do we really believe that our Heavenly Father delights in us? Okay, Cheryl nodded her head yes. Okay, amen. I don't know about you, but I've had trouble believing that in my life. I mean, to be completely honest, uh, most of my life I've thought, well, man, my behavior is just terrible. You know, how could God delight in me? I didn't even think about God delighting in me. You know, I kind of thought that he was tolerating me. Like in Gene's uh, presentation yesterday. He loves us from where we're at. Oh, he loves and us where we're at. he sees us Amen. through his son. Oh, and he sees us through his son. Beautiful. And, and he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So at, uh, at Jesus' baptism... The Father said, this is my beloved Son, and I love Him because of who He is. He is my Son. And I know in my life, when I finally realize that my Heavenly Father not only loves me, but He actually likes me. In other words, He likes being around me. He likes spending time with me, even though my life is a mess. That was what converted me. That made me fall in love with my Heavenly Father. Amen. Un that's unconditional love. I mean, that is just, I don't deserve that. That is so, that's just grace. That's pure, unadulterated, astonishing grace. That my Heavenly Father would like to hang around with me, even though I don't have my act together. And, that is just, and then, of course, when He puts His Son Jesus in my heart, and Jesus begins to live His life within me, then He begins to change me. But again, like Brother Patrick said, it was because of that connection that Jesus had with his Father before his baptism that the Heavenly Father could say, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So, welcome everybody. Good to have you with us. Amen. So we're talking about the perfect cycle of love, how it begins with our Father in Heaven, and then his, our Father in Heaven gives his Son uh, love and delight and pleasure because of who he is just because of who he is and so if we are to love one another as Jesus has loved us powerfully to bring God's change into their lives to change their behavior which we can do we are going to have to believe that our Heavenly Father delights in us right because how could we show delight in someone else 
if we haven't experienced it from God, the source. I mean, that's like a waiter in a restaurant. You know, he doesn't get any food from the chef in the kitchen. He's walking around with an empty platter. <laughs> How can he give any food to anybody in the restaurant? He can't, because he doesn't have it. So I really want us to think about, think about, you know, in your life, do you really believe that God delights in you because you are his daughter, because you are his son? I feel closer and a lot more love when I seek him more. Ah. Versus when I don't read, don't, you know, don't pray as yeah. much. Amen. Very good point, Jerry. Also, is if we we accept Jesus, though, so that's when the Father's not. Uh, he's looking at us as he would as his son. He's not looking at our characters. He's looking at his son's character. Amen. Amen. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So that naturally, our hearts are what? Good or evil? Evil. Evil. When Christ, when we accept Christ into our hearts, are we good or evil? still evil. We're still evil? Really? When we accept Christ? Yeah. When Christ is in us? Oh, when Christ is in us. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's a good <laughs> sin. The sin remains, but it does not reign. Ah. Okay. But are we evil still? Nature? Yeah, because Christ is good. Right. But we are evil. Correct. Yes. So, are we ever, in this world that we have, we're never going to be anything but evil. Mm. Unless Christ is in us. But if Christ is good, we're still bad. Yeah. But it's Christ in us that's good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's Christ. And the Father sees Christ. And we become partakers of the divine nature. Yes. And is the divine nature good or before evil? <laughs> 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 kind of makes my brain smoke. Yeah, Go ahead, brother. Exactly. <laughs> I think um, this gets us into the question in some people's mind of what nature Christ took. Mm -hmm. I believe that he took the form of nature. Mm -hmm. The same nature that needs redeeming. That's the nature that he took. Amen. And by the, in, by the indwelling, by the combining of the divine nature with that fallen human nature, he lived a perfect life from birth to baptism. Amen. And then he was endowed with power from his father for his ministry. And that is like supercharging what already existed in him, which was the, the mysterious combination of the human and the divine nature. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is what Peter is talking about when he talks about this great and precious promises that he gave to him. That we would be given what? Somebody? That we be made partakers of the divine nature. nature. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, you know, when you stop and think about that, because I like my brother here, um, I realize that, you know, my nature, my human nature is like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, in all honesty, I do not come before the Father and think, yeah, I'm your son. I come with my with my with my arm around the leg of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Like a little like a little scruff on the streets, a little urchin, yes. hanging on to Jesus. And um, I think that because Jesus had his hand on my head, the Father smiled at me and said, I like you too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christ died for us when we were his enemies. When we were evil. And, uh, but does something change when we accept Christ into our hearts? Do we change? What's that? Everything changes. Everything changes. If it does slow down, take. If it doesn't change, did we accept Christ? Right, exactly. So that's, I think, something that I have totally missed in my life. When Christ comes into my heart, I'm different. I have changed. Because Christ is good, and Christ is now in me. Right? And so, was there a comment on mine? Well, there might be a Oh. 
Uh-huh. Okay. That was valid. <laughs> so go ahead, brother. I think something that uh, Brother Jerry said is so important. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why it is so essential for us to be in the presence of God, reading his word, <clears throat> hearing his word, reading his word, and speaking to him from our heart. It's because we can hear him speak those words to us. Mm -hmm. You are my beloved son, and you are my well pleased. Mm -hmm. And we get that from by being in his presence and communing with him as a son. Yes. And so we we need that we, Jesus when he was in the wilderness of temptation remembered the words that God had spoken to him. Mm. When Satan said, If you are the Son of God, mm. make me stones in the world. Mm. Yeah. And we need because he comes to us and if, if you are the Son of God, <coughs> yes, mm -hmm. then are you son. ready, the Son of God? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't think the thoughts that you think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The guys you wouldn't him. dream the dreams that you dream. Yeah. If the Son of God is in you, then you wouldn't be doing this. Ah, <laughs> yes. See, that's yeah. That's what. Our, that's where I wanted to go because we need to apply this to us. I, I've heard <laughs> Satan's voice so many Can times in my life saying, that. "What? What's that? Oh, he, yeah." Brother Al said that, um, how did you put it? Um, just, okay, so when Jesus was baptized, he had remembered the words that his father, uh, well, you know, Satan had come to Jesus in the, the wilderness uh, right after his baptism. And uh, Jesus still had his father's words in his mind uh, as the devil began to tempt him if you are the Son of God. And his father had just told him, this is, I am your father. <laughs> you are my son, and I am well pleased in you. And that's what the devil was con t contesting when he, uh, when he was uh, tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And so Satan comes to us with the same thing and, and says, you know, if you've really accepted Christ into your hearts, why are you still doing this? And, uh, you know, why is your behavior still bad? So, uh, yeah, so that's the application I want to make here, is that we must believe that God, our Father, delights in us. And He doesn't just tolerate us. So, go ahead. One, one thing that has helped me is to realize how different God's agape love is from human love. Mm -hmm. yes. Because I have had friends end the friendship. I have been divorced. The husband ended the relationship mm -hmm. after swearing before God that he, you know, till death do us part. Mm -hmm. um, I have had co-workers, you know, I've had close co-workers and the other co-workers did not care for my company. Um, and so I realize human love is not dependable. Um, right. It can change at any moment, but agape love won't. Amen. Amen. I, I think it's that's what we gain with Christ. Yes. Is even the capability to desire light and goodness. Yes. Yes. It's a miracle that Peter understood that Jesus was the Son of God and was given to him by the Father. Yes. And that's the same with all the rest of this. Mm -hmm. Any love that we can have that's real love, any desire to seek God is a gift yes. that we receive when we receive Christ. Mm -hmm. Before that, we don't want that. Right. The world loves darkness. We love darkness. Yeah. And it's a miracle that we can have that transformed and have any desire for Christ. Amen. Amen. And Kevin, you before I go to Rich, I uh, just want to key on this. You mentioned a very important word, and that is desire. Mm -hmm. You know, many times when Jesus healed someone, before he did, he would say, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? So Jesus was all about choice, our choice. Um, but what happens is that, you know, I just learned this recently, and I praise the Lord for finally uh, getting this through my thick skull, that, you know, I used to wonder, if Jesus is in my heart, why am I still doing bad things? And when I do something bad, am I kicking him out of my heart? <laughs> and so I uh, finally dawned on me that it's about desire. When I truly want 
to make my Heavenly Father my, ob my objective, my destination. It, I'm not perfect. I'm still making mistakes. I may even still, you know, commit... Uh, commit... Uh, what's the word? Involuntarily? Yeah, involuntary sins. Yeah, I, my life could be a mess, but if I want to go to my Heavenly Father and He is my ultimate destination, Christ is in my heart. Because that desire is there. The desire that God has placed in me through His Spirit, through His Son. Amen. And so it's not my behavior that determines whether Christ is in my heart or not. I mean, otherwise Christ would be going in and out and in and out of my heart like all day, all night. But Christ is in my heart when I desire to, to go to my Heavenly Father. And we see that in Romans 7 when Paul is so conflicted it says, I want, I love the law, I want to follow God's law, but I can't seem to do it. What I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, I do. So it's, it's not about his behavior. That's not the, the crux of the matter. It's about his desire. Yeah. And so, go ahead, Brother Rich. I was, was going to mention the uh, baptism. This is my beloved son, whom I am well Desire of also says it wasn't the father just talking about his son, he was talking about all those who took accepted his son. Beautiful. All of humanity. Yeah. And there's a really good quote here, too. It says, uh, Christ imputes his righteousness to the repentant, believing soul, and he who receives Christ becomes the friend of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so he's not looking at us, our character at all. He's looking on his son. That's why we don't need to stop thinking that it's looking at us directly, it's not yeah. nothing in us. Yeah. Yeah. Can you repeat what they're saying? But we can, those of us at home can't hear what the people in the audience are saying. Oh, okay. Rich was saying that in the Desire of Ages, it's, uh, it says that at Christ's baptism, God was speaking not only to His Son when He said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, but he was speaking of all believers who choose to be in Christ. And so, uh, yeah, so that, it's very encouraging for us to remember that, that God is not really, you know, looking directly at us, he's looking at his son. And if we are in Christ, then uh, the father is, is looking at the life of his son, and he's also looking at us. So... So, so we see here that God loves His Son. God delights in His Son. And um, I want to see. There are three practical steps to loving one another powerfully. And the first one is... Showing God's delight in someone. Now, this is not our natural tendency. You know, when I see my brother Ben, you know, I love Ben, we're great friends, brothers in Christ. If he is doing something that I think is wrong, you know, my first reaction is to, you know, want to go to him and say, Ben, you're wrong. You need to change this, man. <laughs> and, but is that the most effective way to bring change into his life. No, it's probably just going to push him away, right? He's, he's probably going to get defensive and say, well, you're doing this, what about that? You know, <laughs> that's just our human nature. And so, but if I begin to really show God's delight in Benjamin, that's going to start to bring change in his life. And that is difficult for us to do. But in order to love one another as Jesus has loved us, we must show God's delight in the person. And so we see in the life of Christ, you know, not only after the Father showed His love to His Son, His Son then showed delight in us. And all through the life of Christ, we read about Jesus delighting, delighting in individuals, right? Give me some examples some people Jesus delighted in and how he showed his delight. 
the children that came to him. Aha, uh -huh. children, blessing the children. Uh -huh. Mary yeah. washing his feet. Yes, good one. Mary washing his feet. Nathaniel. What's that? Nathaniel. Yes, Nathaniel. How did how did Jesus show delight in him? That uh, you know this is uh, one in all Jerusalem without guile. Uh huh. Yeah, a true Israelite indeed. Yes, a true Israelite indeed. Uh -huh. yeah. I think he showed the life of the Roman court and the adultery. Yes. Well, that was. Neither do I condemn you. Yes, that was a powerful God. word. God. Yeah. Sin no more. Yes. I'm, I'm free. I'm delivering you from sin. Yes. You know, and I was just reading in the Redemption series, um, just this last week, uh, it was so powerful. Jesus not only forgave her, but he encouraged her to change her life, right? Okay, so he didn't set aside her sin. He didn't say, oh, it's okay, I love you, you can do whatever you want, it's all right. No, but how did he encourage her to change? And Ellen White wrote, it, oh, it made such a deep impact on me. It says, he spoke to her comforting words, which encouraged her to change her life. I was like, whoa, I've never seen that before. You know, I thought he, he offered her encouraging words, period. And then he encouraged her to, to change her life. No, he changed her life by, by giving her words of comfort. By being kind to her. Yes, by being kind. Uh -huh. yeah. And then one more thing, and we'll go to Brother Patrick. Again. This was really, <laughs> this really just blew my mind. So Ellen White wrote that after Jesus said, go and sin no more, then she fell at his feet, burst into tears, and confessed her sins. I was like, wait a minute, don't we confess our sins first, and then Jesus forgives us? So apparently Jesus had already forgiven her, right? He loved us first. Yeah, he loved us first, amen. So, so many times we think, that, oh, I need to confess my sins to convince God to forgive me, right? Because if I don't confess, God won't forgive me. No. You know, Jesus Christ forgave us on the cross. God, our Father, forgave us on the cross through His Son. And now, what we need to do is we need to confess Christ. We are now in Christ, and Christ is now in us. That's really what we're confessing. That's, we need to confess Christ. We focus so much on our behavior, like, oh, I stole a cookie, I've got to confess that sin or else God won't forgive me. There's something wrong there. That really makes God look, look very bad. <laughs> it's not the, the God that I worship. Go ahead. When we, when we read of um, Jesus saying to Mary, uh, to the woman called the doctor, Go and sin no more. We just realize who it is that's saying that. Mm. This is the Son of God mm. who was the operative agent of the Father when the world were created. So it was actually Christ who spoke the world into existence mm. at the behest of the Father. Yes. Amen. And I think we need to remember that when God says, Be therefore perfect, that's not pull yourself together and and get this stuff right. in order. Right. It's this is a creative. This is a creative command. Yes. Let there be light in your life. Yes. <laughs> Let there be Jesus in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And at the, the same light. time. Uh -huh. Same time he says what Peter, uh, Patrick said he said. Doesn't he speak through God's word? Yes. Confess your sin. Yeah. In order to be forgiven. Yes. So yeah. Let's not let's not knock that down. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very good point. I don't want to get too much into that, but do a do a search in the Bible, especially the New Testament, and search for times that people confessed their behavioral sin. And uh, I was surprised that I didn't find hardly any instances of that, of people confessing their behavioral sins, like, I did this wrong, please forgive me, Lord. 
there in 1 John chapter 1 is what you're referring to. And when you look at the context of 1 John 1, 9, which is, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your, your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. On either side of that verse, verses 8 and verse 10, it talks about he who uh, says he is without sin is basically deceived and he is a liar. So I really think that, and you know, we all can, can study this out, but I really believe that it's, so verse 9 is not really focusing on make sure you confess all your behaviors, your bad behaviors. It's really saying make sure that you realize and admit, confess that you're a sinner. And that you need Jesus Christ. Amen. That's really the emphasis. That's, that's the point. Yeah, because, because if we get too focused on our behaviors, then it becomes about us. And what we do and what we don't do. Go ahead, Val. Maxine, have Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Maxine. I don't Maxine. want to say anything, just let you know Maxine has her hand. <laughs> um, okay. Um, that's that's really answered my question. Two of my questions were when I behave badly, I'm looking at myself, right? Yes. Okay. If I yes. Okay. Yeah. That's and that's that's a sin in itself. Mm. However, um, even though my husband's in the conference church. He doesn't understand everything the way I do because he can't. He's ADHD, he, but he's a very humble man. He'll yeah. lay down and play dead for almost anyone. Occasionally not, but most of the time. And and uh, it said Jesus humbled himself. And I'm not very humble because I'm always sticking up for my rights. <laughs> But it's the, there again, me, me, me. And yeah. that all also is a sin. Yeah. I didn't even understand that till just now. Well, praise the Lord. Awesome. But, uh, one, one thing I will say is that even though my behavior has been really bad in the last week or week and a half or so, the Lord has blessed us as a family you know, my husband and me with it's unbelievable how he's blessed us even over and above my bad behavior. Mm, so I can relate. <laughs> can you? Yes, I can relate 100% sister. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well I I, uh, I don't think you've ever done anything like I did. <laughs> we won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, and that's the point. You know, we get focused on ourselves in so many ways, and even when we're confessing our sins, we can get can focused on ourselves. Well, Lord, I did this. I'm such a bad person. You could never save me. That's not God. That's Satan. Okay. Or we can go. You know, go on the other side of the road and say, well, I'm pretty good. I haven't done anything wrong in the last few hours. <laughs> you know? It's, it's hard for us to accept that God's forgiven us. Yes. Because we can't forgive ourselves. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so that is our main challenge as human beings. Get your eyes off of yourself and look at Christ. Yep. And so the Father's looking at Christ. Yep. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> and that's really the only way that I can connect with the Father is by looking at His Son. And it's the only way that I can look and love one another is through His Son. Yeah, how do we know what the Father is unless we look at His Son? That's right. Yeah. That's why Jesus came, to show us His Father, right? Go ahead. You know, sir. Okay, go ahead. Say, not only take our eyes off of ourselves, but off of each other. Uh, yeah, that's what we tend to do a lot. In judgment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, Oh yeah, because it again it really comes back to me because I'm looking at you and and saying, oh well, you know he's doing this and this, then that makes me feel better about myself. Yeah, yeah. But we should we look at each other and see Christ? Yes. Look for Christ in each other. Ooh, that is a perfect segue 
to what we're just talking about. Showing God's delight in someone to bring change into that person's life. So how do we do that? What are some practical ways I can show delight in you? And show God show God's delight in you. Yeah, see, <laughs> in yeah. silence. Even, it, even if not God's delight, God's compassion. Ah, okay. Because there, God's so the grace compassion. of God go I, and there I have gone, you know. Yes. So we look with compassion. Amen. And we're yeah. all in the same humanity boat. Yes. Encouragement. Mm -hmm. Encouragement, okay. Mm -hmm. right. Service. Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm going to drop these down here because I think it's very important. So, I don't want to forget what we're saying. Encouragement, compassion. And what else? I'd say patience. I, what I'm thinking is, when somebody in my life is doing something really stupid, and I look at them, God is working in me to be able to look at them like, that's really not who they are. And I love them nonetheless. Even when they're being not so fun to be around. And I can do the same for them. And uh, I think God's delight is being able to look upon them with, with patience, compassion, and respond like, like the three words we got up there, with encouragement and, and love towards them. Uh, I've experienced that and most of my life I have not because my natural inclination, the iniquity within me would be like, man, you're being a, a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like you right now. I don't want to be around you. And good luck with that. Sympathy and, and empathy as we <laughs> talked about yes. last week. <laughs> yep, yep, amen. Yeah. If it was said, I couldn't hear when they're talking back there. Those of us at home can't hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's basically sums up what Ben was saying. I think uh, you know the difference between sympathy and empathy. And uh, can anyone tell me the difference? Yeah, sympathy is putting yourself in the person's place, where sympathy is more of like a kind of sorrow for that person. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, amen. Yeah. When Jesus was here on this earth and looked at people, did he see their sins or did he see them as they could be? Mm. Mm. As they could be. As they could be. I think that's true. I think he saw like the woman in got adultery. He didn't see her in adultery. He saw her as she could be. With his grace with, in her. With, yes, yes. But, that's, but that's, you know, and that's what, can we do that? Can we look at somebody and say, you know, I'm glad I'm not like him. No. Can we look at anybody and say, God can take care of them. Mm -hmm. We can see God in them, even though they are sinning. You can't that's see that's their, hard to do. You can't see their hearts. Yeah, we can't see their hearts, but... Jesus looked at him. He sees the heart. And he didn't see their sin. We look at him, we look at people and see their sin. Yeah. Yeah. We need to try to stop doing that and looking at people as completed in Christ. Amen. Amen. Whether they are there or not. Right. Amen. Because that's how God looks at us. Exactly. Yeah. Through his son. Go ahead. My, just uh, being a servant with joy, no matter what their responses are. Mm -hmm. their attitude towards you. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I was in maintenance most of my life and you have some equipment breaking down and they're just ground open and stuff like that. You just have to, you know, talk to them nicely and, you know, work and help them to understand. Yeah. Just enjoy it and love them. Yeah. And that takes humility, right? And then you get that equipment fixed and they, they think you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so like, hey, how you doing later? <laughs> yep. Amen. Steve. So, so Steve. that there, yeah. Uh -huh. I have one for you. Yeah. I have a client that I'm taking care of, and she, this is the first atheist I have ever met. 
She does not believe in God. She does not believe in Jesus. She believes she existed from something. But, you know, so how do you deal with her? Mm -hmm. Well, think about how your Father in Heaven has loved Jesus. And then think about how Jesus has loved you. I would say. And it takes some thought. I mean, because, I mean, we can say, well, Jesus has loved me by dying on the cross. Well, yeah, that's huge. But how has he loved me today? Yeah, but she doesn't believe in Jesus. Right, but you need to think about how Jesus has loved you. Exactly, because Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So that becomes a very personal thing and something we really have to think about. How has Jesus loved me? Because that's how I can love someone else. But yeah, I can see how that... It's, yeah, a it's the weirdest thing, thing I've ever felt. Yeah? I mean, to sit there and talk to somebody. How can you exist without Jesus in your life? Right. I mean, I wouldn't be able to. Right. So I'm sitting there thinking, how in the world do I reach this lady? Because she, all her, she has never had Christ in her life, in her family. They have, nobody has been raised with Christ in their life. So you don't even know how to talk to her. No, right? no, I just <laughs> I listen. Yep. Yeah. Oh, she said it. Listen, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> You're so showing God's delight. Listen. We can show God's delight in someone by listening to Him. Now we're talking about active listening. Who? What's active listening? You uh, listen, and then you. Basically, in my words, paraphrase back to them. You understand what they're conveying. Yeah. Uh, letting them know, hey, I hear you. I hear you. Exactly. That, that's what Christ said. He said, um, Father, I thank you that how thou hast heard me. Um, and I know thou hearest me always. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yep. So, listening. We can show God's delight in someone by listening. <coughs> Cheryl and her co-worker... How about, what else? How could Cheryl connect with this lady who's an atheist? Yeah. I would say, keep your focus on Christ and let His life abide in you. And like, I believe, the Apostle Paul said, I must decrease so that Christ can increase. That was John the Baptist. Oh, yeah. John the Baptist. Wrong guy. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. I think that's key that you understand that to be able to truly connect with people, it's not truly in the end about you or them. It's you helping them to see where that connection really needs to be. Because we don't have all the answers. But I, like I say to people, I don't have all the answers, but I know who does. Yes. You know, I, I'm just a, I'm a mortal. I still fly. I don't have all the answers all the time. I might be tired, hungry, not the nicest dude to be around. I might not want to listen to you. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But um, you know, I think that's key is we allow uh, Christ to work through us so that we can love others and point them. Because I've had people say, uh, why are you different? Like, I may be hanging around at a like, junior high level. I remember this one guy said, why don't you ever say profanity? Everybody else does. Why don't you? I said, because uh, God's word says I, I ought not to. And, you know, I just gave him a moment of pause. But I, I wasn't bashing these people around me because they were using profanity all the time. I never said anything. But I wouldn't join in. And, why, why not? And it opened up an uh, opportunity for me to speak something probably he never thought about before. Yeah. Well, because I've encountered something greater than myself. <laughs> Amen. Yep. But she doesn't want it, but, but she doesn't think about it. She doesn't want to think about it. She does not yeah. have any desire to, because Jesus does not exist as far as she's concerned. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Prayer. That's what I yes. want to use on her. Oh, big time prayer. That's <laughs> a huge. Yeah. And you're only also, God can help her. Only yeah. God can and you also. But there are more things you can do. Yeah. But you're thing. also not going to convince or 
Yes. Change me somebody else's mind. You're not always going to be able to do that. Yes. Some people just will not listen. Right. Okay. And, all, and all you have is your example by your life. Yep. By living them. Exactly. Like the, the drum. Mm -hmm. You love to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. For a long time. For a long time. That's all you can do. You can't put them down for it. Don't try to say that you're wrong. All you can do is love on them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll help. Maybe it won't. Uh huh. That's not your problem. That's right. Uh, yep. Well, yeah. Ultimately, it's an individual's choice. Yes. Yep. Because uh, not all people are going to be saved. Yes. Right. Now, I want, I want us to take a step back. You know, we get into this mindset of, well, how can I change her? How can I change this lady into believing in God? But it happens so subtly, you know? And we just get, we get down that road. That's not our place to change this lady into a... We can change them. We can stop the example on... Exactly. Yes, exactly. Now, there's... There's some, there's some other specific things you could do, Cheryl. Cheryl. You could focus on the things you like about her. And you can tell her that. You know, I really love your sense of humor. You know? Or, um, or I really love how honest you are. You know? or, or show an interest in her interests. Yes, yes. Find, find those connecting points that, you know, she may be interested in hiking and you like hiking. Or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> no, that can't be it. Okay. But, but she just, uh, yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from and everything, but I just, uh, I'm just, I'm just amazed because I've never met an atheist before. How in the world can she live without God in her life? Yeah. But she has, like I said, she's 76 years old. She's never had him in her. But yeah. Well, I think God is in her life. She just doesn't realize it and doesn't recognize it. So, but, uh, but, yeah, God can change her very, very powerfully. And he can use you to change her as you seek not to fix her, not to change her, but to connect with her. And, and another thing we can do to show God's delight in someone is to write out a vision for that person. And what I mean by that is write out how this, this lady could be, what kind of person she could be in you know, five years down the road if, if God is really working powerfully in her life. Write out a vision statement for her. Uh, I might get more trouble. <laughs> well, you don't have to share it with her. <laughs> oh, okay. But just write it out for your, for your benefit. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it high? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sir, and then Jerry. I was going to say, uh, I like to testify to what God has done in my life. Amen. I think that's very powerful. Yes. And helping them to see also what how God can work in their life as well. Yes. Amen. If they could see it and in, in, in work in somebody else's life, when I tell them where I've come from and what he has brought me from, the power of that can be... Very good. Yeah. yeah. That, and that is the only thing that I found when I was working in a secular environment. I was working with this guy who was vaping in, mm -hmm. in our enclosed office. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was at the time. This was years ago. I'm like, is he smoking right in front of me? <laughs> but um, I remember him saying something like, oh, yeah, God would strike you dead or something. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, I jumped on that and I said, well, you know what? In my life, I've found that God is nothing like that. And he's more like this and this and this. And, and then I felt so good. It was like, hey, I just witnessed. <laughs> and he broke you know? down barriers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was, so I praise the Lord for that. So, Jerry? Um, I just want to, under the prayer, one prayer that uh, Jesus prayed that I think we all should pray, basically. When we pray to his Father before he's going to go to the cross, his Father glorify me that I can glorify you um, and that's any condition that anybody we meet we don't might not know what to do it's like father I just ask you to glorify me that I may glorify <coughs> you in this situation mm -hmm. and I believe he'll help you do that I, I you know more so later in my years I pray that a lot 
Amen. you know, help me, Father, because there's nothing good in me in that aspect but Him. Yep. So. Amen. Yep. Yeah, one of the most powerful transitions in my life was when I realized that I'm not really here to have health, even though God wants me to be healthy. I'm not really here to have enjoyment, even though God wants me to have enjoyment. I'm really here, I mean, when you really get down to the foundation of it, I'm here to praise God. Yes. And what I mean by that is to help uh, the people in my life see God more clearly. Mm -hmm. That's praising God. That's fearing God as the first angel's message. Fear God and give glory to Him. That's why we're here. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And so in every prayer, when I pray for someone who's sick, if you can glorify your name, heal this person. I know you can do all things, but if you can glorify your name, heal this person. And so praise to God should always be our ultimate objective. And that leads us to a life of power. When God actually answers prayer. Because we're actually focused on what it's about. Him. So I appreciate that point very much. So, so we've been talking about how to demonstrate delight in someone. And one thing I wanted to just mention again is time. You have to spend time with this lady, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. You have to spend time with this lady. It's a, well, I do. I yeah. work with her. I yeah. Take care of her. Right. So, but, uh, but that's so hard for us in our lives today, right? Mm -hmm. To spend any time with someone. We're all busy. We're going here and there. Yeah. Yeah, we're out of time, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do we need to wrap up? Okay, so, yeah, so um, spending time with someone, you think about all the hours that Jesus spent with his father in prayer. They spent a lot of time together. That's why they were so connected, and that's a big part of why the father could delight in his son, because of all the time they had spent together. And that is how we can show delight in someone else, is by spending time with them. So. Could I say just one quick thing? Yeah, as we wrap up, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, what I'm getting today is that not just to connect with God through Christ, but to connect with each other. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's the, that's the theme of, of my meetings, is uh, how to love one another powerfully as Jesus has loved us. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and close with, uh, with prayer. Heavenly Father, we appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to be outside of ourselves, to look outside of ourselves, uh, to look at you, Father, through your Son. And we thank you so much for the power that you are offering to us, the power of your Spirit, the power of your presence in, in our lives, Father. And we thank you so much for Jesus, our only mediator, who is the only one who brings us your presence, your power, that is your Holy Spirit. We thank you so much, and we pray in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and in his authority. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. I guess. Oh, I don't know. Should we just leave it on? Let's take a five, ten minute break. There's some uh, snacks and tea and water. What's that? And please help ourselves and then the next presentation with Jeep will be. Oh, yeah. The reason I said that is because I don't.